Hello everyone, my name is Chris, and in this video, we are talking about PyTeal routers. On Algorand, there are different types of application calls with unique side effects tied to them. First, we have the normal application call called NoWAP application call. It just calls methods defined in a smart contract. Then we have these other on-complete application calls with unique side effects. For example, an opt-in transaction will opt in an account to the smart contract and allow the contract to write local state to the account. We also have delete application calls that will delete the smart contract or update application calls that will update the smart contract. And of course, we have the create application transaction that will deploy the smart contract to the Algorand blockchain. With all these different kinds of transactions, it's important to have a way to let the smart contract know when to execute what part of the contract based on the type of application calls. That's where the router comes in. The router is great because it abstracts away the handling of method routing and provides an elegant way to give instructions on what part of the contract to execute. The router was introduced with ARC4, which is a standard for ABI compliant smart contracts on Algorand. You can look into it more in detail with the link on the top right, but it's basically a smart contract standard that makes interaction with the smart contract from the front end much easier and standardized using ABI. Now it's possible to write smart contracts without routers, but those smart contracts won't be ABI compliant. So it's highly recommended to use routers to build ABI compliant smart contracts. So when you're writing your smart contract with PyTeal, the first thing you would do is to set up a router. To do that, you use the router class. Here we have a simple smart contract that has one method called hello, and this is returning hello with the name argument that you pass in. Here we have the router, we named it my first router, so that's the first argument of the router class. And as a second argument, you pass in bear call actions. Inside the bear call actions, you're defining what happens on different oncomplete application calls. And for create transaction, we're using oncomplete action.create only method. This create only method is only triggered for a create application transaction. And we're always approving that transaction. For an opt-in transaction, we're using call only method, and call only method is triggered for non-create application calls. And the opt-in transaction, we always approve as well. For a closeout transaction, we're using oncomplete action.always method. Now this always method is triggered for both create and non-create application calls. I'm only using this here just to showcase what kind of oncomplete action methods that we have but usually you would just do call only for closeout. And for closeout transaction, I'm always approving as well. For both update and delete application transactions, we have the oncomplete action set to never. Now never is used to always reject the transaction. So this smart contract is not updatable and deletable. And here we're defining what happens for clear state outside of the bear call actions. And we are always approving that. If you want to include some PyTeal logic for the clear state application call, you can have the PyTeal expression in place of the approve function we have right here. Now there you go. Now we have successfully set up our first router. Now we defined what happens for all kinds of incomplete application calls, but what happens when the front end sends a NoWAP application call, which is just a normal type of application call, to this hello method right here. In order for the router to know when to call this hello method, this hello method has to be registered to the router. And to register to the router, all you need to do is add this decorator at router.method. This decorator will automatically register this hello method to your router, and your router will know when to call this hello method based on the method signature provided within the NoWAP application call. Now let's deploy and call this smart contract using that flow. Let's expand this down here. And all the code down here are the code that will be run when I run the Python file. Now to use that flow's ABI studio, you need three artifacts, the approval program, the clear program, and the contract.json ABI file. You can get those artifacts by using router.compile program. And here I'm specifying the version as eight because that's the latest version right now. Now, once you do router.compile program, that will spit out the three artifacts, approval.teal, clear.teal, and contract.json file. And down here, I'm taking those three values and dumping them into the file system. Now let's open up a terminal and run this file. Now, if I go to the folder, 
go into the router folder and go into the artifacts folder, you can see that the three artifacts are written out on the file system. Now let's head over to Dapflow, connect your dev wallet that you created before, and head over to ABI Studio. Here, import in the ABI file. Go to File, Upload File, go to the Routers folder, go inside the Artifacts folder, and import in contract.json file. Now to deploy this application, come to Create App, click Bear, and because the smart contract doesn't have any global storage or local storage, I'm going to set all these values to zero. Come down here and upload the approval program, upload the clear program, and then click Create. This will successfully create your application, and you can see the app ID over here. Now to call the hello method, come to Execute. I'm going to put in Chris as the argument. If I click Execute, you can see the value returned hello Chris, and the method executed successfully. Today we learned about the router and how it simplifies routing different types of application calls and how you can use it to compile the PyTeal smart contract into Teal code and also spit out an ABI JSON file. Building a router will be the first thing to do for all PyTeal smart contracts, so I wanted to cover it before anything else. Now let's move on to the next video.